when we work with persons who suffer from mental disorders. One phenomenon that we encounter rather frequently is what is called dissociation. The word dissociation simply shows that something that should have been together, that should have developed and functioned together, has been separated, split, so that now there are two or several phenomena where one should be and the function that was supposed to be going on cannot be achieved. The phenomenon was first studied by French psychiatrists in the 19th century, most famously Jean-Martin Charcot and Pierre Janet. They had encountered a huge number of patients, mostly female ones, who suffered from the phenomena that some parts of their lives could not go together with others. This could be present in their bodies, like one part of the body functions in an isolated way from the rest of the body. Very famously, in, in one of the earliest psychoanalytic cases, the arm of one patient was dissociated from like here, downward, where no anatomical or physiological explanation for that could be provided. Some patients cannot use their hands for several days. They have the so-called hysterical gloves and hands are completely insensitive and then this disappears and hands work completely properly from then on. This can happen with the eyes as well. Patients have the so-called hysterical blindness for a certain time and then this blindness disappears. No anatomical or physiological explanation for that. The authors of the French tradition tried to explain this through two mechanisms. One, traumatic experiences that are being enacted in this way and two, lowering of the level of consciousness. Your consciousness does not work on the same level as usually and because of this lowering you become unaware of something that is going on in your body. Quite similar things can happen in the mental life and this has been a frequent topic in the psychiatry of the 20th century as well. For instance, the thoughts and the emotions of a certain patient can be completely separated. So the patient tells you something that is bothering him, that is very difficult, that he is suffering from and all the time this person is laughing. The emotion expressed and the thoughts expressed are of a completely different nature. This has briefly been a very important topic for Sigmund Freud. In the last decade of the 19th century, he started developing a theory that was supposed to explain this phenomenon. In the book Studies of Hysteria, Freud and Breuer Joseph Breuer was the first author, author of that book, developed the idea that the basis of psychotherapy should be free associating, that patients should be invited to simply talk about whatever comes to their mind. The reason for this was the hope that free associating will help the patient stumble upon, luckily, if you will, on what was dissociated and that free association should somehow reassociate what trauma had dissociated. Freud and Breuer believed that if the patient managed to remember the traumatic incident that led to the mental disorder and dissociation, simply the memory, the newly discovered memory, will somehow be powerful enough to deal with the dissociation. After 1897, Freud completely dropped this topic and this topic is present in the work of Carl Gustav Jung in the first decade of the 20th century and this is one of the reasons why Freud was strongly criticized by French authors and first of all Janet. In the late 1920s, the topic reappears in the work of Chandor Ferenczi. Ferenczi first writes about the mechanism he calls autotomy. This is 
a mechanism we can encounter in animals, most famously probably in lizards. If you try to catch a lizard, very probably the animal will run away and the tail will remain in your hand. The animal will sacrifice one part of its organism in order to regain liberty and then the tail will grow again. So Ferenczi developed his ideas based on this analogy, claiming that the reaction to trauma is always dissociation. That when you cannot bear something, that when you cannot endure or integrate a certain experience into your personality, the consequence must be dissociation. You give up a part of your personality so that the rest will be able to go on living. So now this mechanism had different names in Ferenczi. He called it atomization, fragmentation and so on. At moments in his late writings, like his clinical diary, the word splitting in German is mentioned. Splitting is nowadays the most frequent term we use to describe the mechanism of dissociation. It became famous after Melanie Klein wrote about it in 1944 in the paper about schizoid mechanisms as her attempt to explain what happens with very young babies around four months of age and in very severe patients. And she described how, in her opinion, hypothetically, both of these groups, when faced with unbearable experiences, split a part of their personality off from the rest of the personality and then, in the second step, try somehow to evacuate it into the other person. This idea is also very present in American psychoanalysis, in the work of Heinz Kohut, and Kohut introduced ideas of horizontal and vertical split. By horizontal split he meant the mechanism of repression, as described by Freud, and by vertical split he meant a dissociation in the personality that was not just between the conscious or the and the unconscious, between the ego and the id, but he thought about the split that went through all the instances of personality, leaving one part of id, ego, superego split off from the rest of the personality that contained the major part of id, ego and superego. In Kohut's opinion, the mechanism of splitting is something that we will meet in all cases of narcissistic personality disorder. Later on, it will be included as one of the major defense mechanisms in borderline personality disorder patients. Because of this, the work with these groups of patients is extremely complicated and we may expect to see various enactments of split-off parts of their personalities that the patient is not really aware of or has any control of. The issue of dissociation became extremely prominent in the 1970s and it either continues to be or is even more prominent nowadays. The reason for this was a famous TV show on American television where a patient appeared claiming to be suffering from what was called multiple personality disorder. And multiple personality disorder became all of a sudden a center of media attention and many people started writing about it and many people started reporting in media again that they had been abducted by aliens, that some medical experiments had been performed in them and that as a consequence of that they were now suffering from multiple personality disorder. Within 15 years, by the, aid, by the end of the 1980s, there were specialized hospitals for multiple personality disorder. This disorder was described like the patient was suffering from having inside of their personality at least one sub-personality and possibly even 100 of them. 
In some books, authors describe that when one patient in his different personalities, they can have different heart pressure, different level of white blood cells, different tolerance to alcohol, and so on and so on. For many years, this uh, disorder was diagnosed in the United States, Holland, Israel, and only a couple of countries around the globe, and not in Europe. In the meantime, its name was changed into Dissociative Identity Disorder, and I believe that more and more authors are taking it seriously and more and more authors are writing about it. There is some confusion between how to differentiate between complex PTSD, borderline personality disorder and uh, dissociative identity disorder, but it seems that more and more people are writing about it and possibly more and more people are suffering from it. The very nature of dissociation that would be so deep and so powerful, I believe is still mysterious. Whatever happens with these particular disorders in future classifications of mental disorders, the phenomenon of dissociation will certainly be something we will have to deal with in work with patients now and in the future.